You gotta go on that duck hunt, John. Everyone gets drunk, there's camaraderie, everyone relaxes. Go, win Leslie back. You got another plan? Can I tell you something? Honestly, you kind of suck at piping. And if you're gonna suck at piping and also not shoot birds, you're not gonna be a McMillan man. All right, so our, get, our guest today is Ben Johnson. And yeah, ben. Nice. Thanks for having me, guys. Yeah, long time yeah. fan. It's great. It's great to have you. Awesome. Uh, so like, yeah, how did, how, did, how did you guys meet? Uh, of uh, course, Patriot. <laughs> Patriot. Yeah, yeah. It yeah. was actually uh, yeah on Instagram. Like uh, he was doing his fan page, and we were also friends. So I was like messaging both of them, thinking they're different people. <laughs> and Mike's just like, you know, that's me too. I'm like, huh. same person. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Good thing you weren't talking and, shit about and, him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh my god, that would be like pretty fuck. <laughs> but yeah, we we start to get talking right, and and then we we and then it expands to other topics as well. Like we 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 both love Barry the show. We both love Better Call Saul, and and as we keep going on, he 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 wanna come to Thailand, and then we actually get to meet and hang out in real life. Like for like I, I don't know how many days, like two days, yeah, two yeah, days. Yeah. And it was, a, it was so awesome. Oh, that was, was you. So yeah, like awesome, a, what's up? That was you. Are, yeah. are, are you involved in film or, any, or anything? Or? Uh, yeah, I like to write. Uh, just do some short films, but not to an extent I wanted to be. But uh, definitely a big fan of it. Okay, just a film nerd like us. Yeah, yeah, just geeking yeah. hard on it. Nice. He's the yeah. right guy for this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. The A team. That's crazy. Yeah, you guys, you guys met on. Uh, Patriot fan page and then met up in Thailand. Yeah, You're that's the first time I I feel like the the impact of the show. Like I mean the impact in real life. You know how 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 yeah I never seen this before. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean it, it was not as easy as A to B getting over there, but once you gotta kick it and really like you know delve into the show, it's a uh, nice to have a good community of you know Patriot fans like you guys. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, have you ever pa- passed through Florida? Stop by. Don't tempt me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You were just yeah. passing through Thailand, or what? Just yeah, t- I was. Uh, and it changed my life, and I wanted to get you know get out and see the world. And I know Mike's over there, so I'm like, all right, making this trip happen. And, and you were going to like um, before Thailand. You you were at like Vietnam, right? Yeah, I was in Vietnam for a bit, uh, and then I got to catch over to Bangkok for about ten days, and. Uh, definitely planning my next visit back out there, so we have to yeah. do a longer trip. You do some some cool shit together if you come. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. That sounds. We awesome. got to work work on our folk album. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah get together. Yeah. Write, write some songs. You too, you too, Joe. You should you should come too someday if you can. Uh, I would here. love to. You're always welcome here. Yeah. Maybe we'll meet in Luxembourg. Let's go to Luxembourg. Oh together. my god. Hey, we could do it. It's a, actually. We should, yeah. A tour? A uh, yeah. vlog? <laughs> yeah, a, a, a Birds of Amsterdam field trip. Oh my god, man. All right, so today we're talking about episode three, season one, episode three. And What's the name? What's the name? McMillan Man. Yeah. McMillan Man. Right, Man. So good. Man. <laughs> okay, it's a, it's a good one. It's a good one. It's great. It is. Yeah, starting off, yeah. Uh, starts off with the fall of Leslie Claret, the great, yeah. great Leslie Claret. Yes, we see him. Uh, we get uh, his backstory at the beginning of it. Does it, does it start off in this in this um, like Narcotics Anonymous meeting? No, it uh, starts at a uh, family family. Oh um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Didn't he's stra- he's yeah. strangling his son, like, like right. He goes backwards, and they're talking at the table yeah. how he loves them so much, and uh, and then they kind of call him out on his drug addiction, and it doesn't go very well. Yeah, yeah right. and 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 at the at the beginning, um, what did he say? Wait, uh, you don't talk that way in my house, right? <laughs> and then we see we see the struggle between Leslie and his Vietnam half Vietnamese son. Right? And then right. the aftermath, we see like the they just sit there like um and Leslie tell like you guys know I love you so much, but you see the table kind of mess up. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, Why don't we stop doing yeah. cocaine and act like a man? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, Leslie just jumped there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
not to jump ahead too much, but I was thinking when I was watching that, you know, uh, he has this weird, um, like, uh, he really likes Steven, the the Asian guy with the head injury. I, I wonder oh, if yeah. that has anything to do with his Vietnamese son so, as a strange totally son. Man, I think. You think that's like... I can do that. For yeah, sure, yeah. He's like, he, he tried to, you know, to, like his second chance, he, he probably thought it that way. So he tried to, you know, connect with Steven and yeah, help him. Yeah. yeah. Or he, yeah, even the when Leslie was in the uh, Alcohols Anonymous or Drugs Anonymous, he was talking about how he's like sitting in the park and watching his son intricately build this sandcastle and smash it to bits, like a reference right to, to the ground. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that speech. Like it's so good. Yeah. I mean, great Kurt, Kurtwood Smith. I mean, we're, we're we're very special to have him in the show. Did you guys hear Kurtwood Smith on that um, armchair expert? Armchair. Chair? Yeah, I did. He he did the monologue. Too. Yeah. So good. I was so happy. He's just <laughs> talking about Patriots so much. Yeah. Yeah, that, you know, they got, they're big fans on Armstrong too, like Dax, and like they love the show. So they were just like super excited to have him on. And yeah. I'm the same way, like like Drax would be like, he'll just rewatch Patriot because it's such an easy show to. Yeah, Dax, that's a, Dax is a, like a huge fan. And, and he was in um, Atrocity Smith too. Yeah, yeah. Dax and, yeah, he was a boy. His wife, Kristen. Yeah. Um, it's awesome. That might have been where I, fir- I first heard of Patriot through a couple podcasts. That might have been one of them. Mm. I, I kept hearing it b- being brought up in podcasts. That might have been one of the first ones. Maybe he brought it up. Some other comedian brought it up. And then uh, wait, uh, but yeah, we we haven't asked Ben like how did he find Patriot? Right? Yeah, yeah. How did you, how did you come yeah, to find how, it? how did you find it? Oh yeah, uh, just you know, living with roommates. Uh, someone like got control of the TV and they're like, "We're gonna watch Patriot." I'm like, "All right, whatever, whatever the show is, I'm in." And uh, yeah, started watching it and just really enjoyed. It. I got the two seasons in, so that they already had come out. Uh, and then I started just watching it again, you know, like get home, push play, and just let it fucking rip, you know, like just rip enjoyed rip. it so much. Yeah. Really tie one on, and uh, yeah, just after that, just I watch it every few months. It's Something you can always get a new item from it. You watch it again, uh, and just the depths of the characters are fantastic. Was uh, were all your roommates into it as into it as you? Uh, oh, uh, not as much as I am. I, I definitely turn a lot of friends when I meet you know someone I'm like you got to watch the Patriot. You just got to like just sit down. Then like by the time we get to the episode three, you're like hooked. It's just running with it. Uh, and yeah, it's just, then after that, you, you get into the, the, the church of Steve Conrad and you can go out to all of his other projects and really appreciate them. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. <clears throat> had, you can't get out from this church. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I've had the experience before where I've been like so jazzed when I was first really jazzed up about it, telling friends and they're like, yeah, I'll check it out. And then they're like, watch a couple and they lose interest. I'm like, I don't, I don't get it. <laughs> what happened? Yeah. It's, yeah. I guess it's like not for everyone, but there's definitely for someone. You know, like like us, and we we just so hooked about it, and can't stop thinking or talking about it. Yeah, and that's why we we're doing this. <laughs> Have you guys watched it on the been watching it on Amazon Prime yeah. by chance? Yeah. Uh, did yeah. they edit it again? Because uh, after rewatching it, I think they may have like edited it a little bit to uh, do something of it. Do what do you think? Maybe that was it. Hmm. Not maybe something I noticed. I I, I, I didn't uh, notice. Yeah, I didn't notice it. But, but I'm watching. I'm rewatching it now after like two years of not watching it. So I'm. I'm. It's like new almost to me. Oh, um, that's great. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I'm seeing good. all kinds of stuff that I didn't uh, pick up on the first time. All right. Yeah, the new intros or uh, or even the song itself, uh, Vashta Bunyan. This, that song forever is this epic for the the show itself. It's such a great yeah, song. I'm, I'm 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 so glad I I get to know this song because now whenever I come to you know I live in like three hours um from Bangkok oh, so yeah. whenever I go there I always listen to that song yeah it's it's it it good fits for the road is she yeah. still alive the girl Who, I'm I not sure so. yeah I think so she's okay. she's she still has a great voice too yeah, yeah. a different different vibe yeah. speaking speaking of the 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 uh, Patriot music. You know, I, I had YouTube on, on my TV earlier and just the algorithm was just pumping stuff out while I was cleaning or cooking or whatever. And uh, it popped up the um, Towns Van Zant, a live version of him playing, um, uh, what's that song that he plays with his dad? If I, if I needed you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
yeah. Such a good song. Yeah. Yeah, even the music within the show. Like this one of the episodes, like John doesn't play. He's sitting on his yeah. bed because he has Charlie and he's like he's kinda dealing with this stuff. Like the dog's definitely helping him out a lot. You kinda notice he's getting a little better. Right. Yeah. He's, and, he's I mean he he one. didn't like sings a song, right? But he 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 was like, I don't want to shoot a duck. I remember <laughs> that's it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I didn't think about that. When he has a dog around, he, maybe he doesn't need uh, need the songs. Yeah, because towards the end, uh, he's at the bar with the dog, and the lady's like, "Is that your dog?" He's like, "No." And then he's like, "Oh, I should get it back to its owner." And he's like, ah, "I guess so." You know, has to get rid of his one thing and keep him on. Yeah, that must have hurt the poor guy. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, we we get into Leslie's story. We see him in the um, fighting with his family, and then we see him in the AA uh, or the NA AA whatever meeting. I was wondering if I wonder if one of the writers or if maybe even Stephen Conrad himself has experience in AA rooms. Or mm. NA rooms. Uh, that is interesting to think about because it seems really in depth. Like a, uh, uh, it's really well written. Uh, the, the entire. You know, story covers addiction, trauma, yeah. and, it, and it touches all the bases of that. And the uh, the halt thing, you know, at the end they call it a halt dog. That's a big, um, you know, in, in those rooms which I've I've been in quite a bit in my younger days. They um, that's one of the little their slogans: the halt, hungry, angry, lon- lonely, tired, or whatever. So yeah, I I never knew about how dogs before, and and it was it wasn't. And really interesting, and yeah, I wish whenever I feel sad, I can just order one. <laughs> yeah. 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 So we get that, and um, <clears throat> let's see. From there, we get into um, oh, then we get back to the office where one of my favorite lines when they're in the elevator and Stephen is in there and he introduces <laughs> himself as Eugene. <laughs> I'm Eugene, Eugene Chow. Chow. Yeah. <laughs> That's not his name. He's like, yeah. I'm sorry. Let's step back, Stephen. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. What did she say after that when they were walking that, out? That was uh, that was like embarrassing for me for both of us, Stephen. <laughs> <laughs> She's so hard on him. Yeah. That poor guy. And then John goes to his desk and he erases the name that he wrote, oh Eugene God. Chow, and fixes it. He's like, John's just kind of out to get him, like kind of push him away. Yeah. He has like, to do it. But yeah, I mean, it's so evil, but I can't help but laugh. <laughs> I feel bad, but yeah, it's fuck. <laughs> it is it is evil. But he's like, uh, I think he's trying to get it to where whatever he says, nobody's gonna believe. You know, if he doesn't even know his own name, if he says, "Yeah, this guy pushed me in front of a the bus," they're gonna be like, "All right, Stephen, you're a little liar, Stephen. Why do you lie all the time?" <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah. But yeah, it's also uh, on his way in. He uh, almost hits uh, Agatha. She's she's coming in for interviews. Right. Right. Uh, John's kind of getting that, getting a little, a little hot in his, you know, seat, you know, being undercover and all. I love that lady's and, face. Uh, yeah, the reaction. Yeah. Just her, her like stoic, expressionless face. Very cold, business oriented. This beautiful, perfectly symmetrical stone face that this and, man has. And you see her face. You you remember when. Like the elevator just opened, and then she was staring at John, like a stoic, stoic, like staring, right. and it's just. <laughs> She's a great yeah. character. Like her, like trip to uh, the U.S. You know, because like Tom is trying to stifle her getting information, access to this, and she's like just adamant, and she makes her own luck. Like this is kind of when we start to see the uh, Rochambeau. Right. Like yeah. she gets she gets stopped a lot of the times, and she's like Rochambeau. That's her. She, that's her way out. Yeah. Oh. Because a lot I mean, of people think it's chance, but it's like she has like you know the upper hand, you know, pun intended. I mean, John's always have to do like a like to to go crazy to to climb you know buildings and jump from it. I guys <laughs> be like Ro- Rochambeau, Rochambeau? And then just clear it. Yeah. Yes, yeah, she has that. <laughs> Everyone uh, got that way, I guess. Yeah. She has this ability to read people. Yeah, very well. Uh, yeah. But we also get the good scene of Tom playing a uh, racquetball with. <laughs> Some other government official. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. right. It's like it's fun to see like those small scenes that you know Steve Conrad puts together. Like 
out of the world, but he's just having fun with it. And, you know, he could say his friend died in, like, passing, and it's fine. We believe it, but I have to see I him play see back. Yeah, yeah giving, giving that death its own little mini story. Oh, yeah. You kind of, like, it's learn tough. a little bit about the guy. You kind of learn who he is right before he dies. <laughs> they enough. were so bad at, at Wreck and Ball. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're all out of shape. And, and it, the, but the, the scene looks so good, too. I mean, it's like the contrast between the colors, like a bit Wes Anderson esque. Yeah, yeah, very much. Yeah, with, yeah, there's a shot with Tom on the center, and it, it was yeah, nice, very perfect. Yeah. Yeah, that's what makes his world so uh, like expansive and, and real. Because, I, I mean, you know, like every character that's in it, like, you know their story, you know who they are. So oh, yeah. People just don't pass in and out. Like, he takes the time. Yeah. And Tom's like a nice link to like our reality of our world because uh, in the following scene he's watching Obama on TV that makes us feel it's like realism, and then yeah. it goes from, from that scene to uh, they're doing the big reenactment with the piano. Right. You have Leslie and Stefan doing like little dancing, so that's like you know that's like fictitious and just fun. So it's a nice little comparison of the two stories. Yeah. And when when Tom was like. Uh, Watching Obama, he he was having like the crossword on too, right? That's is that the first time you see it? The crossword um, communication. I didn't you know, know like that. the the app, the, the iPad. App, oh yeah, yeah, like, the, the, like the words words friends. Words and they friends. like they use that way to, to security talk. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's that's how they're using. That's what they're using to communicate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got it. Yeah, it's it's a cool method. Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I hadn't thought about that before. Like, you get these little glimpses into actual reality there for a minute. Oh, yeah. And then you branch back out into Conrad world. Right. It's a little, little in that. between. Like, oh, we were dealing with, like, actually, you know, processes of fighting down the Iranian regime or whatever. And it's real, but at the same time, we tell it in a humorous manner. Uh, yeah, in future, it feels like a... You know, it, a, a little bit like a magical world. I don't know what to, how to say about it, but there's like a, lots of weird characters in the world, and the vibe is just a bit, yeah, it's it's different. It's it's it it's realistic, but it's not like in totally in our reality. I feel so that's how I feel about it. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah he does that but, a lot. Uh, you see that a lot in uh, Perpetual Grace. Oh yeah, there's yeah. just like magical yeah. stuff Great that show. just randomly happens. Well, he, I mean, he is a magician at some point. Oh my God, that's yeah. Normally they wouldn't be. Normally they wouldn't be able to get away with that. But but here, <laughs> they did. Yeah, that's so you guy. guys. Yeah, if if you haven't seen um, um, Perpetual Grace yet, I I highly encourage you guys to do it. Yeah. Right, Perpetual Grace Un- Unlimited, yeah. which that you have to buy that. I don't. You can't stream that anywhere. Yeah. On, on like MGM, I think. MGM. Yeah, yeah like, that our Epics is on there too. Epics gone now. Uh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> Behind my times. But yeah, I got to watch that and uh, really enjoy it. Like Ben Kingsley, amazing. Yeah, get the reason. Yeah. Seeing him across from uh, the the other great actor uh, Chris Conrad, just those two amazing yeah. actors exchanging Chris, their lines. I oh. love Chris Conrad. And, <laughs> the funniest guy ever. It, dude, like, it's hilarious. And, the character Chris plays on that show, and his name is New Leaf, right? And the, his character here in Petra, Dennis, is so different, drastically different. You would be so impressed. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah well, wide, wide range. But that's, uh, that, that really speaks to, to Stephen Conrad's talent, that he's able to, if you throw some magical thing into a, or some very unrealistic scene into a, like a political type show, I think that would take a lot of people out of it, but it feels totally natural. Everything always yeah. flows perfectly. But speaking of the uh, of Chris Conrad, at, at some I think um, next in in the uh, in the show we get to we get to Lakeman going to dinner with him and his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Is that Don't next my on the... Yeah, to to prepare for uh, the the interrogation. He was yeah. so he's so happy to have his friend over. Oh, like, <laughs> yeah, he's like we can go downstairs and we can work out. Yeah, but yeah. don't hear us talking. You're gonna hear it from upstairs. Yeah, we're actually gonna <laughs> have to lift weights because you can hear the weights. <laughs> we got 45 minutes. We can do legs. We got this. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you can uh, just. That's a great line. Though. He drops the line. It's just like John says. It's like, does anything like 
make you one easy. He's like, you know what really freaks me out? Twins. And his <laughs> daughters come down the stairs and they're, they're twins. And it's like, oh my God. Uh, such and a John good reaction. Did you see that? <laughs> yeah. She was the, like, oh. <laughs> the first time I saw that, I died. Me and my wife both. It was, it was so unexpected. Because he was so serious. He's like, twins, man. Yeah. It's like, they just creep me out, you know? <laughs> they and walk John, John saw it like, probably wouldn't come up. Right? Yeah. They walk in. Yeah. Dad, hey, Dad. <laughs> He looks at his own kids yeah. almost like he's a little bit scared of him. Yeah. I mean, Michael Dorman, the, the Shining wife, the Shining, uh, <laughs> those two girls. I mean, you know? Michael like, Dorman's a great actor, yeah. and like Chris steals the scenes from him so many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His Everyone scene. steals each other scenes all the time. Oh yeah, like Ichabod. Come on, like. <laughs> well, that, that's why. Uh, yeah. That's why Lakeman is such a good character because he's. I mean, he's so uh, he's not a very like animated guy, so he really lets other people shine in the scenes with him. But you you love right, him, yeah. but usually when he's in a scene with somebody else, they're they're kind of the character. Yeah, yeah very true. Like he just kind of observes them, and like yeah, and the other person really does the heavy lifting there. Yeah, he's just getting through it. He's like <clears throat> he's got so much on his plate. Man, but. Yeah, it's uh, yeah. The, the name of the episode is really uh, fulfilling because you get to see John kind of uh, do something he didn't want to do is become a McMillan man. And because so yeah. downstairs, Dennis is like, "Well, to be a McMillan man, you got to be good at laying pipe and kill him." Suck at it. Yeah, you suck at it. Yeah, and such good like you know like allegory of like men in our society is like you got to be you know got to be good at laying pipe and killing things and to be at least John can do half of it for sure, but. Not sure if that's something John wanted to do. It, you yeah, know? very, very reluctantly. But then, yeah. then it gets to the point where he has no choice. Yeah, so, like with his own dad. He and, yeah, and and we haven't mentioned that uh, before. Like, uh, how do you say it? John John had to do a presentation, right? But he with the denon, but he absolutely messed mess it up because they have to do it without filter, and yeah. it shows us that that's like. To John, it's all memorization, like right. the piping, piping thing. So that's, that's when it happens, it's it's magnet way. Yeah, one oh one. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, that scene is yeah, interesting because no, no. there's like there's these two guys that are that are both very well meaning. Because you learn earlier that Leslie, he cares deeply for this company. I mean, he yeah. started it. This is his life, you know. And he sees a, a guy coming in. That just doesn't seem to care about it and it just it kills him at the same time you know john he doesn't want to be doing what he's doing either he's he's on his own thing it's like yeah there's this huge misunderstanding between these two guys oh and we, we see yeah it's sad it's um but we see like in the first two episodes leslie kind of had it in for like out for for john too right but in in the third episode i actually see when he come to John Des. He he was like, "Let's get back into the track, like, you and you and me." And we, we can see Leslie actually try to you know, to to be good to, to John and to be like to have a good professional relationship. But then yeah, John just you know can meet that ex expectation. But yeah, but we we understand John too. It's it's sad. I mean to see that they yeah. got along. Yeah. I definitely, yeah. Uh, uh, having John like you know make Leslie so angry at him is just—it's it, a great comical thing. Uh, and Leslie keeps trying because it's out of his hands at the time. You know, like uh, he, he's divisional; he doesn't make executive decisions. Oh, you yeah. know, uh, he doesn't want John to go to Luxembourg. He's kind of kicking him off, you know, the the flight team. And uh, so John's kind of stuck, and they have to go to this duck hunt, which I'll now it's the John has to go to the duck hunt. Yeah, with, without Leslie's backstory, he would just be the asshole of the of the uh, <clears throat> of the show. That's and, then, the beauty of yeah. cold open. Yeah. Yeah, and then when you when you after knowing that when you see these scenes, you're like, you really feel bad. He's not just being an asshole. He just he just loves he loves his company. Oh, yeah. he came from nothing. He got out of prison. He <laughs> slept in his car. Like really feel for this guy. Like. Oh. <laughs> yeah. I forgot he went to jail. Oh yeah, I cleaned and, the like, cuspids of a 250 <laughs> prison population. So get out! You remember game. that? Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> and and in that this cold open, we see like Leslie was having some guy doing the testing, right? 
that's probably like the, the foreshadow of it. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 Where they check yeah, your the hint. They check you for like yeah. hidden things in your mouth and stuff before you go into jail. Yeah. Oh yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I remember that. And okay. then, then they touched so on it too in the uh, in the uh, their like podcast thing they do. He talks about when they he went to prison. And they, oh my all, god! Integral. Uh, what was it? Say again. Snowman. Oh, the snowman episode. That was yeah, my yeah. favorite. Uh, what was the podcast called again? Structural about. dynamic of flow, like the uh, inter- uh, integral. Principle. Yeah, 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 we're talking. Yeah. We're talking about a podcast that Stephen Conrad has, which is I'm just yeah. I'm just filling people in, in case they don't know. But he he has a podcast where he's kind of writing, you know, other stories with the characters from Patriot, mainly Leslie. Oh, at like the earlier at the Corbin, he he was like he was talking about like uh, my assistant, like my 30 years or something assistant who I haven't been looking at like you know directly but then when he, he was doing cocaine he realized how pretty she looks and how she has like a splendid breast <laughs> and and I think that assistant like uh showed up in the the podcast too oh yeah yeah, yeah I think she's part of the story yeah and that's cool you know build up from like the dialogue and into a story that, like that that's respect yeah yeah, you see it really at uh, Leslie, you know, his life fall apart. And like you were saying, like, you start like he humanizes him. Like you start caring about this guy who's working so hard. And then you have someone like John come along who, who has good intentions, but like you just can't catch a break. Yeah. Leslie, you know, keeps trying. And then, you know, eventually the breakfast scene comes, but we'll save that for the episode. Uh, you guys will have that to talk about. Yeah. And they, um, he gives up trying after uh, they have this meeting where they have to pitch something to all these guys, and uh, and Lakeman totally botches it, like we, like we said earlier. I think that's the moment where he just totally gave up because after that, anytime he approached him, he's like, no, he was done with. Right. <clears throat> so, and, it, and it was a, a group of uh, Germans who were just loving Leslie. Like he's a, a hero to them. He like he made piping a thing. He's like you're the great <laughs> Leslie cleric. Like, I got, I'm like oh my god. A million years ago. <laughs> yeah. Really, yeah, a million years ago. But the young bucks do that all the talking these days. Yeah, he's like, that, I, he's like I don't handle things like that. And they're like yeah, because you're Leslie cleric. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's so, like, yeah, you kind of see the, the the ego hit for him there. Yeah, they really hurt him a little bit. He's a rock star in the in the piping community. Yeah, and and they were like, "Are you on a project of this size?" <laughs> I, yeah, Leslie must feel like, "Oh damn." So, yeah. so then we get to the duck hunt. Oh yeah, yeah. which is a great scene. But that's uh, <laughs> when uh, oh, I don't know if it's at the beginning of the duck hunt when he's sitting with the guy Ichabod. Oh yeah. <laughs> What does he say to him? Uh, what's your last name anyway, Peter? Yeah, and he, he was like, Ichabod. Right? And then John was like, well, uh, I thought that was a, was a nickname. Yeah. <laughs> and then Ichabod realized, like, why do you think, why do you think that was a nickname, John? And John yeah. just walked away, like, walked the fuck away. Storms yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, there's no way to get out of that. Well, and John's trying to suck up to uh, Leslie. He's like, do you want to be my Marsh buddy? Like, no, uh, um, Marsh buddies with Ichabod. <laughs> yeah, he's he, like, you're going to go with Florence. He just, Laura, he just keeps like failing. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Florence is like the head boss. At, oh, he's going to like, you know, oh do the chopping if it needs to be done. So the, um, the, the boss guy is trying to impress the girl. Who, who is the girl that he's trying to impress? She's his other employee. Laurie, like, a, I think her name's Laurie. I think, I'm not sure. If, I think she's probably an employee or just... Girlfriend of employee, I'm not sure, but the the boyfriend Dick, like really, you know, be like harassing, be like um, embarrassing Lauren so much. But and earlier Dennis was saying like um, Lacroix was a good boss, like a good leader, and I'm I'm starting to question if, if that's true. Like throughout <laughs> the series, I don't I don't feel that way. If who was a good leader? Yeah. Lawrence, oh, he's the uh, yeah. I guess, uh, Do you think he's a good leader? No, no, I don't. I don't think he but, even wants the yeah, job. I don't think. So. Yeah, but Dennis keeps saying it, like at the like gym thing. Oh, oh Dennis yeah. keeps saying that. Yeah, 
Yeah, I, he's 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 not in it either. I mean, I, I mean, I don't think uh, I don't think That's Lawrence is in it. Yeah. No, even uh, admits it too. He's he's a little drunk in the boat, and he says like, "Man, I wish I can go kill these ducks and like be manly, but I don't want to shoot a duck. Like, if I invented guns, that makes sense, but it just it's, it's <laughs> bought it from the store. Yeah, yeah. And he was like bambling about um about how he totally loves Laurie and how his his new hobby is like looking at looking at her I, and I was like losing it when watching that yeah I wonder if I guess it's like my little hobby I wonder if she's yeah. she's not a secretary is she I think she's just uh, dating like the they're like their duck hunt guide uh, the the dude who's kind of like makes fun of uh, Lawrence when he walks up he's like hey Richie Rich <laughs> That's, Richie uh, Rich he's just a guide so I think it's just his girlfriend that you know he wants to impress okay but he said he sees her a lot. The reason I'm saying that because I was thinking maybe it's sort of similar to like when Leslie was the boss and he he was messing yeah. around with his secretary or whatever. A little yeah, relations there good. to the, the fall. Yeah, that's a good, good one. <clears throat> but yeah, he's uh, he needs to impress this guy. He, I guess he realizes it because he's he's he takes him out on the boat. Lawrence takes him out on the boat and is firing him. Yeah. yeah, he's like, I'm trying to figure out how we can part ways and everybody be happy or whatever. And it was a very nice way to fire someone. That was a very sweet way to do it. It really was. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Lawrence is a good guy. He's got his weird little kinks and stuff. He's uh, <laughs> yeah. but he's uh, I think he's a good guy who got. Isn't it like a family business? I don't I don't know if it's yeah. something that he ch- chose. His mother-in-law, I think. Yeah. Yeah. No yeah his mother-in-law particular. gave him the job. Kind of, you know, you take this and run this company, kind of thing. Right. So he kind of he kind of uh, feels for John a little bit too, because he sees John doesn't give a shit about it, and he's like, you know, I don't really give a shit about it either. Oh, yeah, a little reflection in that. He's just like, I, I get it, man. Let's you know part ways nicely here, and yeah, you know, Leslie doesn't but, like you. I'm gonna yeah. on that. But before before in, before he gets fired, like John sees birds, and he just uses quick thinking as always. And boom, boom, bam, bam, and then all the birds just flew down from the sky. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sure shot. Yeah, that's how he earned the name too, right? Like, uh, oh, yeah, sure that's shot, how Lawrence right. called him. Why? Right. Yeah. Does he call him that sure in this shot. episode? Not this episode, but oh, later yeah. on he called him like crack shot. But then it became sure shot at the end of the the season. <laughs> yeah, and yeah. then we got the intro from season two. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So he. Uh, so, What's up? Oh yeah, you, you you can go for it. I was just gonna say that there's also a thing with um Agar and Dennis too. Oh, like, oh going yeah, yeah, at yeah, the yeah. same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. We're going back and forth between him hunting, I forgot about that, and uh, Le- uh Dennis being in- interrogated. <laughs> which he just does he does everything wrong. Like he he can't, he, get, he coaches him before and tells him what not to do. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and he was, um, John told him, like, don't cough, like, um, twitch, something like that, right? Um, but before the interview starts, uh, then he's just cough. And I can't, like, offer him water, but, but he just say, like, oh, no, I'm not going to, I'm going to be coughing during the interview. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. God. Yeah, I won't, I won't be coughing during the interview. How do you, how do you know? I just, I just won't. <laughs> he's so confident. Okay. Like, he's, like, how is Luxembourg? Oh, it was great. Getting stabbed was great. Oh, no. Oh. I mean, it meant the houses and buildings. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I think Chris Conrad. So I think in his mind, he's he's nailing it. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, yeah. Totally. He's 007 spying it. He, like, it's just, that's what he wants to do. Yeah. And, and it, yeah, and then uh, during like dinner with John, too, John tells him, you got to smuggle $170,000. Into Luxembourg, he's like his face. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he's like, guys, I can do that. He is so happy to be a part of all this stuff. Yeah, yeah. But that's he's, what, he's like a weekend warrior. Yeah, that's why you love his character so much. You just see this like childlike innocence, you know. <clears throat> I, I guess he might like kind of represents a little part in us, like being excited, probably being excited. In this stuff, but mostly in real life, we probably freak out by it already. <laughs> but yeah, that will come for the too, I feel. Yeah. 
Yeah, I mean, Dennis is kind of a badass. I mean, he, he's ripped. You know, definitely a bunch ripped. of pythons yeah. wrestling under his shirt there. And then he <laughs> knows like seven languages. He has wife and kids. He's doing good. Yeah. Like he wants that more, that excitement in life. Yeah, I like I like that you mentioned the the language. His his knowledge for language thing. I think it, that's kind of his his ability to right. Dennis, I feel like everyone in this show, like main characters, all have their specific sets of skills. That's like. Different. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's a well-rounded individual, and connect take a stab into the thigh like a champ. Like I would not do as well he as he did, getting stabbed in the thigh. Yeah, he he kind of just kept rolling with it. It's like don't go to the hospital. <laughs> yeah, and and to think that he would would have been like the spy in season three too. Oh, Damn, that'd be a cool run into. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Yeah. We we also have like Tom uh, talking to Cool Rick. Oh my god! Yeah. After that. I don't yeah. Oh like, yeah, 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 yeah. Because like um, uh, the physicist is uh is, is uh his wife's flying to Luxembourg to get the suitcase. Yeah. He's so he's sending that. sending cool rig. Yeah. Send. And it's it's kind I kind of noticed something you know like um and Tom just didn't really ask Kurik to go just tell him to go too and I feel like. Uh, Tom is always harsher to Edward than Tom than John. Like we always see the way he he treats Edward. I feel like it's definitely something there different, and we can. It's a great contrast to when we see um, the other Iranian like counterparts of the Tavner too. We can see how nicer the dad was to the the eldest. But yeah, we talk about that later. But this was one of the scenes that kind of highlight, you know, like. Certain darkness in Tom, I feel. Yeah. Yeah, the way yeah. he treats uh, the brothers so differently. Yeah, I hadn't thought much about that. That's that's another type of a thing. I think we probably talked about it before that Conrad explores a lot. The, uh, yeah. the father, son, brother. It's complicated, com- complex. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but yeah, and also, also we I think we also I, kind of they cut to uh, his wife looking at the pen. And yeah, she's figuring it out. But she's she's gonna go like eventually go try to find John. Right. Yeah. She's 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 a spy too. I mean I mean she's not actually a an agent, but she she has that mentality. You will see it like at the DMV and yeah and so on. She's she's smart. She's a smart one. Yeah. yeah. I mean the entire episode is nice like a transitional one because you kind of get a lot of like high stakes in episode two, and then you know, the following episode is gonna be. Where all these kind of things have to fall into place. I love four so much. I love really love episode four. Yeah. Oh, episode four. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. yeah three. Uh, a lot of three is filling in uh, plot stuff that oh, need, yeah. that needs to be addressed before yeah. you move forward. Basically. Yeah, they really built up the you know Leslie story. Really rounded that one out, and uh, you kind of see where each of the characters are at moving forward like even john's getting like a little scared like he's at his desk and there's a liar written on it pointed at him so there's like someone who knows he's a liar um uh is agatha's that, is after that, him is that bird Steve. math do you think uh <coughs> the, the who writes the liar uh, i believe that would be um uh, Ichabod. Ichabod. yeah yeah, yeah. not to uh, warning because, yeah. yeah oh okay oh, yeah. yeah 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 no no it's it's, it's a great part liar, like, uh, john <laughs> Okay. Big yeah. liar. It's been a few years for me, so I'm like, I don't remember what happens next. <laughs> oh, you're straight. Yeah, yeah. It's, uh, you could talk about it in the last episode where you see each character walking by, kind of like a, a good narrative of saying, like, he has all these people to please, you know, has a list to knock out. And uh, this is when they're starting to build that list. And you'll see the next episode where he really has to deal with it in the proper way. But he has Dennis, so Dennis is going to help him yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool Rick's storyline breaks my heart. It's the whole thing with the kid that he just wants to connect with so bad, and oh my god, and the mom. That's a and real. The mom was so disappointed in him to, in this episode, right? <clears throat> he he, he was he, he, like Cool Rick was like, I, I will call you when I get there, and and she was like, why? Yeah. Yeah, she's that blowing him off. Sad. Yeah, and uh. Kuri was supposed to hang out with Ephraim too in episode one, but has to come for this spy business that he doesn't even really know like what he's supposed to do in it. 
yeah, it's it's sad. We it's 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 in the background, but it's like it's sad to see that. Yeah. Yeah, stories of uh, Cool Rick is definitely uh, a hardship too. I feel like he's uh, he kind of talks against his father, where John goes along with it. We kind of see yeah. more or less like Rick has a, a better outlook towards the world, where John's kind of stuck in following his father's footsteps. And uh, after you know John's dealing with his uh, is his trauma, and he tries to open up with Rick, but you know it's just kind of hard for him to do that. This Rick doesn't understand what he's been through. Yeah, the only one who knows is his dad. And Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> and the dog. Yeah. But yeah, so he's getting kind of treated like that by his dad, and he gets treated like shitty by the mother of his son. So you really feel bad for that guy. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. It's like an emotional anchor. Right. I mean, we, because that... we, we, when we think of Cool Rick, we always think of like the, the funny stuff, you know, that cool, iconic Cool Rick moments but yeah there's there's this kind of moment like sneaking lurking behind right yeah i mean the actor does such a great job but he's also in perpetual grace and and severance and severance oh, yeah, yeah. He's, he's on it right now but he, he's just fantastic and he's 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 going places. he's having this new show with um ratio wise to like dead ringers i think yeah he's i'm so happy for cool Rick, man he's yeah what, <laughs> what's his name again just so it Michael Sherness. Yeah. yeah. What's the last name again? Or Sherness. Sherness. C H E R N U S. I think. Michael Sherness. Sherness. Yeah, he's a. Uh, yeah. Good for him, man. I'm, I'm glad to see uh, Patriot people doing well. Emmy nominated yeah. Sherness. No. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, he's fantastic. He's the best. Yeah. So. And in that show, in Severance, his his name is Cool. Ri eh, no, his name is Ricken. Oh yeah, Ricken. Oh my god! I, I can't. I can't. Like, um, I have to think that's intentional, man. It could be. I mean, there is like uh, some, yeah. some degrees of separation. There it isn't Ben Stiller made that show, right? Yeah, yeah. and he's a friend with Steve, right? I think. Well, he, they did. Um, yeah. they Life did, of Walter Mitty. Yeah. Oh my god! I love that. Too. So there could be some some connection yeah. there. Also, yeah. it's easy being called the same thing in different shows. Yeah. Easy to remember, mm -hmm. I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so they're on this boat, and he he's getting fired, and he, he realizes that he has no other option but to kill the ducks that he doesn't really want to kill. So wow. he, he does it, and he saves the day. He gives credit to his boss, yeah. which makes him a Just hero. Was. <clears throat> yeah. yeah, they're leaving, Just too. Just he was so con confused, right? <laughs> like, like, and... and my Macmillan, yeah, and Lawrence was like, um, um, he was saying, I love, I love, um, just like I love Laurie, right? But, but then he switched before that. He said, just like I love, love this company, like Macmillan, Macmillan man. And he was hugging John and, and, and Leslie. And then Leslie was like, Lake Man is not going to Luxembourg. <laughs> yeah, he is. It's a, uh, it's an executive decision, right? And bro, just so fucking confused. Like, what, how, how did, like, Legman did this. Yeah, he, he yeah. gets washed and reborn. He's a Macmillan man now, you know. He, he's drinking. Yeah, he's half like... Macmillan man at least now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, after Lawrence gets gets comes back with those birds, he's like he's loving it. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's really leaned into this uh his his little victory there. He the was... way he grabbed those poor birds and he just throw it to the the boyfriend of Laurie, right? You love it, right? <laughs> yeah. One of yeah, one of the ducks wasn't dead. There's that scene there in the car driving back, and he still oh sees God. it still breathing. John. Can can I see John's John pain? Oh, yeah. I, I don't and remember that. Yeah, because he he in like, his face. Yeah. yeah, he doesn't want to be doing this. You know, killing birds. You know, shooting hotel maids, all the above, and it kind of you kind of see it's eating at him. He's yeah, just doing the right. same thing. That was sad because he's so good at it, and that's what he had to do to, to get by, to get through A to B. Right. Yeah. That's... And he, I noticed that, uh, like, whenever John feels like not so good, he kind of blinks, like, like a, like a, like an exaggerated, exaggerated blink. Yeah, and you can you can see it more in like episode later episode, and it's yeah, it's real. Yeah. 
Yeah, you can always tell that when he's in distress, especially the way he talks. Like he has he has a few moments like in the previous episode where he's like, Yeah, man. When he's really kinda of like breathing out yeah. and he's talking. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <clears throat> That's what you can tell. He's like he's just so conflicted. He's like, fuck. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Yeah, remember. definitely. What's mm-hmm. that? I don't remember the scene where that where the duck was breathing. Is that, is that in this episode or is that the next one? Yeah, on the floor, like, on the oh, car. Okay. Floor. That's what I was saying. I, I like thought the... maybe they edited some new scenes too, uh, or like done something. So I was watching on Amazon, uh, and something was different. So I, there's some scenes that they may be editing in or out, but just repurpose it to try to market it up to like a you know a shorter episode, but. Yeah, there's some scenes I haven't seen. Yeah, but before. you know what? Honestly, I don't think they did anything because they probably not, not don't care enough to do it. Oh, you come me. on, they gotta. Re- re- I mean, some, you know, they, yeah, they just what? don't care. Where else do you show. where else do you watch it? I thought it was only on Amazon. Oh no! So I've been watching on Amazon. It was my first time this year watching it. So oh, okay, uh, okay. Just noticed it's uh, noticed some different things on there. I wish they had like a like a behind the scenes like making of Patriot. Imagine we need a, a Blu-ray uh, box set of Patriot. We we need physical media so much because these days show just original shows, right? Just gone from from the streaming service. That's just scary, man. Imagine if Patriot just gone. What the fuck are we supposed to do now? Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I hadn't thought that's, about that. That's, that's worrying. Yeah. We might have to do it ourselves. We might have to create this <laughs> box set ourselves. We'll do like a uh, what's it called? Be kind, rewind. Oh yeah, you yeah. See that movie? We'll do like a, yeah. a sweeted version of it. Okay, <laughs> that'd be hilarious. Have you seen that, uh, Mike? I haven't seen it, but yeah, I've heard of it on Letterboxd. Who, yeah, who, who directed um, um, Be Kind Rewind? It was like. Um, I think like Michelle who's, Gondry who, who, or Spike Jones or who's Michelle star, Gondry. Who's in it? It's got Jack Black and um, I think oh, Most Def yeah. is in it. But they, they, they just they, they just own like a little movie shop and they make their own recreations of all the movies. Yeah. I, I think Michelle Gondry, who who I love. I don't uh, know if you know who. Yeah, yeah. M- Michelle Gondry. Yeah, that dude's that amazing. I will check it out for sure. Yeah. <clears throat> So it has wow. his. It's like movies made in Michelle Gondry style, like using cardboard and and crazy shit. Fantastically art, and like it's the thing like most people don't understand. Like when you return to a rental back in the day, like you had to rewind it, or you, they were very upset. Yeah, and that that worked at Blockbuster. Uh, it's Latin. The last year they were open, we had DVDs, and uh, we didn't have it then. But yeah, it's uh, it's missing the idea of like the physical copy of things. Like it really like changes it. Like. Uh, even from like CDs, movies, like having something you can like watch and read and have like extras to it, this changes your experience. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So amazing. If you're listening to this, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Go make it, man. And right? yeah. Yeah. Blockbuster was awesome. I mean, I feel like uh, Patriot is so lacking of behind the scene content. Like really <laughs> lacking of it. We. There's one which is like behind the music, and it was unlisted by Amazon for some reason. We, you just can't find it unless you go to playlist. Like that's messed up, man. I don't get it. Yeah. There, Why, has, to, there it, has to be footage. They, they're prob- yeah. That, but that, that, like that clip is the only singular behind the scenes clips I saw. And shows like Better Call Saul used to like break down all the time right, to show behind the scenes. But come on, man. Because this show is so awesome. Like with the, the way they film, the, we should see something out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe we, we maybe we have to do it. Like we, we have to try to get to find it from the people who actually made it. Actually, yeah, sort of made it ourselves. We'll go pick it in the streets because it seems like with this show we have to. The fans might have to do some work here. To, yeah. You know, to, yeah, because they are leaving so much in, like gap for us. Yeah, so I guess three of us might have to do something about that. Do it a documentary. Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. It deserves, you know, maybe like a long, like boyhood, long-term story. I, because I feel like at some point, Patriot's gonna, like, it's gonna rise up, <laughs> and we, we'll, and we'll be lucky to know it first, and we'll be t- telling our friends, told you so. Yeah. <laughs> oh, right, yeah, yeah. Hopefully. Okay. So what's next? What's next? Where are we? Where he killed? He killed the. Um... 
<clears throat> he killed the duck, and we got Dennis's interrogation. Um, I I, I think it, after that is like he's it's when he's in the bar oh. with the dog, right? Yeah, oh. and yeah, yeah. We and we talk about that, right? Did yeah, it? full circle. Yeah, like he meets with Dennis. Dennis tells him he crushes it. Uh, then they tells him uh, Dennis at the bar that he has to smuggle money to uh, to Luxembourg. Yeah, and Dennis told uh, John that yeah the interview went okay, man, went went fine. But then, but I said that, and yeah, and what he said about where John, like he he mentioned John in the interview. That's like, and John was like, yeah, just an, <laughs> yeah. another problem, another Italy fish. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. I think it's a split scene too, because I I think it's also he's in his apartment with Ron, you know, the A oh, team, yeah. and he's oh, talking yeah. with him. It's like. So all all you need for Luxembourg now is the uh, the TV schedule for the Jayhawks is the soccer team that the running uh, uh, nine rolls of duct tape and one hundred seventy thousand dollars. <laughs> <laughs> my oh, favorite my favorite part of that scene is when he's like, "They do jujitsu, didn't they, John?" <laughs> the <laughs> Brazilians, like, yeah, they do jujitsu, didn't, didn't they? they? <laughs> oh, he's relishing that so much. Yeah. He's like, oh. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, your, I'm your guy. I'm the A team. Yeah. I, I don't waste your time, guy. <laughs> Where did you find I'm these the guys? I'm the A team. It's, it's yeah, the way, the way people in Conrad shows talk like, guy. Yeah. Hey, guy. Yeah, the, so the, cat, yeah, the smallest roles of casting is fantastic. And then the guy who plays Ron uh, was famous on, on YouTube. Maybe like one of the first viral YouTube videos back in the day. Yeah. Oh, he was. That's cool. That's so cool. He's he's one of the funniest guy in Patriot too. Ah. If I if I if I ask. so he's so mad though. He's hilarious. Yeah. He gets these crazy, yeah. crazy great uh, comedic performances out of people you never heard of before. Yeah, or small scenes. If I if I read that script, it's like you meet with someone in a small apartment, going over a list of things you need to do the spy thing. It's not very funny, yeah. but like how they put that together to make it just. Great 45 second scene. Oh, yeah. Crazy. Yeah, that's brilliant. But then, and, yeah, so then when they, get, they get back to the, the bar and the lady explains what a halt a dog is, which is hungry, angry, lonely, tired. And yeah. how it's supposed to be there for you in those times. <clears throat> oh, it, it's great for the episode. It, it really ties in uh, someone with trauma, uh, which is a big underlying theme of the show. Uh, and John kind of realizes he's losing that little, you know, life preserver for his problems. But this, he has to give the dog back. Right. He's he's in there in his yeah. bed, and, and it comes and brings him a snack or something. Oh man! <laughs> a sweet little moment. <laughs> is, is that when, when he, he decided to take it back? Yeah, the lady's like, "You should probably get the dog home. His owner's probably missing him." And, and John. Yeah, really, but but really, I think you're right Joe. that's probably the moment yeah he, he realized what it it, it does it, that, that what it could have been doing for it, the actual right owner. right yeah he's, he's laying there in the bed yeah. brings him the snack and he's the next scene is him driving with right. the dog and, and the way um john looks at the dog and the dog looks at john that that was so wholesome so it's beautiful and the lights yeah, yeah. i love it yeah, i'll write the song about charlie later oh, it's a hit Oh, about no. the dog. See, I, I don't remember any of this stuff. Oh, it, it's it's, good, it's, it's so good. Yeah. Like even watching like twice. So like, refresh, road. refresh for you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of it's nice. It's nice getting back into it. But I think that's the whole episode, guys. I'm gonna have to wrap it up before my uh, wife comes in and everybody starts barking and kids start screaming and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for having yeah. me on. Yeah, it's this awesome. is uh, an amazing thing, and I'm really glad to be here. Yeah, yeah they, it's so fun to have you here, man. It's, we haven't talked in like, oh, yeah. like wise for a while, and it's How so nice. It? I hope we can have you again at some point. Oh, please, uh, hired gun. Whenever you guys need me, I'm yeah. glad to talk it. I'm gonna start watching the, the series again, and yeah, uh, love what you guys are working. I'm excited for your future podcast episodes. Yeah, we're uh, yeah. we're moving right along. We we got a lot of ground to cover, so we'll probably be hitting you up at some point. Oh, yeah, yeah. anytime, my man. Yeah. I thought like uh, the Fuck John Wayne episode might be a great one to have, like more than just three people. Oh. You know, it's a celebration episode. So that might be a, a good one to have you back. I like that a lot. Bring, yeah. bring back a bunch of old guests. It, 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 the only problem is with the Skype, it would be so, I, I think it would yeah. be really choppy. Yeah, yeah. We, we will see. We, we, we'll see about it. Yeah. Oh, I have an idea. But it's so nice. I have an idea. Yeah. 
we uh, we get all the the guests to just record like a ten minute ten minutes of them explaining what they love about that episode. And we can kind of do a montage or something. Ooh, that'd be cool. That would be cool too. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah, I like that idea. Yeah, I, there's a lot of things to to do about this part, and yeah. I, I can't wait to do it. Yeah, with you guys. Yeah. <laughs> You guys are both film people. Let's get started on a behind the scenes, an unauthorized behind the scenes documentary. <laughs> dig, dig, <laughs> dig up the, the footage. Yeah, but you shouldn't like you shouldn't encourage that because there might be like um, unauthorized Patreon season three. <laughs> Would like Patreon yeah. season three. <laughs> yeah. So, all right, man, guys, it's been fun. Oh, so, Mike. Pleasure. We'll Until next time. Always. Yeah. yeah, we'll keep in touch right, on Instagram. Oh, always add me on there. All right. All right. Shout out for now, guys. Bye, guys. Yeah.